So to quickly introduce the concept of lipid nanoparticles, as uh, Sabrina kind of briefly talked about, uh, LMPs are lipid carriers that would uh, encapsulate nucleic acid and deliver them as therapeutic or vaccines uh, purposes. And um, some quick background in terms of how they are formed. Uh, LMPs are composed of four different components um, as, as most simple form. We have the ionizable lipid, the helper lipid, the peg lipid, and the cholesterol. And for a really simple rapid mixing method alongside with the nucleic acid, we can form lipid nanoparticles of a size, anything ranging from 40 to 80 nanometers. And, and they've been used for uh, different purposes. And this utility of LMPs have recently been exemplified by the Ompatro and COVID-19 vaccines. And um, despite the application opening up a lot of different new doors into uh, de de developing gene therapies, uh, there are still other aspects of, uh, of LMPs that we still need to understand a bit more. Um, as Sabrina already shown, that um, our lab alongside with the Leslie lab have, also, have always been interested in understanding the formation of these particles. And, um, to explain some of the uh, forma formation of these LMPs, first we have to understand why we need to formulate uh, at a lower pH. We have ionizable lipids, oops, sorry. Uh, we have ionizable lipids whereby at a lower pH, um, it will get protonated and they will become positively charged. And these uh, ionizable lipids can then interact with the negatively charged backbone of the RNA and therefore encapsulating them into smaller vesicles. And through a fusion process, uh, when we bring the pH back up to a physiological appropriate pH like pH uh, 7.4, we then get these fusion events that happens and help us to form the fully uh, formed particles here as shown uh, in the form uh, in the morphology of an oil core structure where you see electron density. And um, this work has been uh, continuously uh, of interest in our lab uh, in terms of understanding how these LMP works. And with the siRNA, we now have a really good understanding in terms of how they are formed. However, there are conflicted morphology and structure that has been reported in the literature when it comes to mRNA. Um, we have to remember one thing is that not all the cargos are the same. For example, mRNA are much larger than the siRNA. And some of the mythology that has been reported, as you can see here, are uh, on the on the left-hand side, you can see these LMPs forming uh, a kind of oil core structure more similar to what we see with the siRNA. But sometimes we can also see these structures where there's these protruding uh, pockets and, and and where you can see there are some density in these pockets. So some literature has reported that uh, by staining these pockets that this is where the mRNA is located. But yet there is still a lot of questions in terms of how are these uh, morphology being formed? Uh, what are the role in terms of ionizable lipid and lipid uh, uh, compositions? And so in our study, what we set out to do is first, how do we induce these blab structures? So um, as we know from the previous studies that fusion is a very important event that occurs when you're trying to formulate an LMP, uh, what we investigated is at the initial stage of formulation using the buffer of pH4, uh, whether or not different buffer and different concentration of buffer and its ionic strength is going to impact the different uh, fusion aspect of these LMP at the pH4 conditions. And using FRET, we have looked at three different buffers, citrate, citric phosphate, and acetate. And what we can see is that the citrate can induce more fusion at a lower ionic strength, making it a more fusogenic buffer to use for LMP formation in comparison to citphos and acetate. And what, what we're interested next is, well, now we know that fusion is an important process and using a different buffer can induce more fusion. We then set out to look at the morphological changes at pH 4 for these LMPs. And if you increase these um, fusogenic buffer uh, concentrations and, and dialyze the, the particle that is first formed at 25 millimolar sodium acetate, we're able to see that um, with the higher concentration uh, buffers, 
uh, we can see there's less and less these tiny vesicle structures, but more of these larger, uh, multilamellar, uh, larger structures uh, when we dialyze against those buffer. And if you then bring the pH back up to 7.4, what we now see is, is that there are these in, induced bleb structures that we can see that corresponds to the um, ionic strength of the buffer. And um, as you can see in these white arrow, we see the kind of typical oil core structures uh, uh, where the electron density are more well distributed in a spherical manner. And um, as we migrate to the higher ionic strength buffer, such as 300 now, um, uh, millimolar sodium acetate, we now can see these bleb structure whereby there are these separate pocket um, that is away from the oil core structures. And if we account for them in crowd EM image, what we can see is a correlation by inducing these higher ionic strength buffers, we're able to get more of these bleb structures. So the next question is, is are these only affected by uh, just the uh, buffer that we're using? Um, the answer is no. There seems to be also other factors within the LMPs that can influence these bleb structures. For example, if we look at ALC315, they inherently form bleb structures without the need of this buffer uh, effect, but more so that you can already see the formation of bleb at 25 millimolar sodium acetate. So um, the next question we had was, how are these bleb um, affecting transfections? Are they important in a biological system? So what we found was, which is quite interesting, is that uh, when we are uh, formulating these particles, they are a little bit bigger in size when you're inducing these bleb structures, which is also very well um, correlated with uh, the, crowd em uh, the crowd EM image we saw previously. But what we can see is that the uh, encapsulation uh, efficiency is not affected by these change of buffers. And more importantly, what we see is that when we now induce more of these bleb structure, it kind of nicely correlated to the amount of bleb that we have with alongside the transfection potency. As we can see um, using luminescence as a measurement, uh, we can see that in HGH7 uh, liver cancer cell line, there are a, a very potent increase of these uh, luminescence signals. And so we wondered also whether or not this is limited to in vitro. Um, and so we investigated the transfection potency um, using uh, in vivo models. So here are some CD1 mice that are injected through IV with a dose of 0 0.5 uh, milligram of mRNA per K. And what we can see here too, which is quite remarkable, is the improvement in terms of signal we're getting at the liver using the LMPs that contains blebs. And uh, we, can, we can see that uh, for KC2 that is formulated in 300 millimolar sodium acetate that forms more of these bleb structures. In vivo, there are a significant increase when it compared to uh, the formulation that is formulated without the bleb at 25 millimolar sodium acetate. What is also very interesting to see here is KC2 has been considered as an early, uh, earlier generation of ionizable lipids, but uh, based on its uh, a formulation in these uh, sodium citrate um, buffers and forming blebs, it is comparable to some of the newer generation lipid as well, uh, which is very interesting. And so the next question is, why are these blebs giving us such results. Um, these are really quite Im impressive improvement in terms of trans transfection efficacy. So this might come back to a question in terms of um, the interaction between lipid and RNA. So with recent studies, people have seen now with mRNA that there can be undesirable interaction between the ionizable lipid and the mRNA, whereby the mRNA can form adducts uh, when the ionizable lipid get uh, oxidized and hydrolyzed in the storage process and therefore induces um, uh, undesirable mRNA adduct that might impair the uh, transfection efficacy. And so we were, we were interested to 
see whether or not the BLEB structure might actually help us protect the mRNA a bit more from these interactions uh, with uh, the ionizable lipids. And so what we did is we formulated the, the uh, different formulation that has uh, increasing amount of BLEBs, and we look at the mRNA integrity, stability, as well as um, how it translates after it's been extracted out from the LMPs. And what we can see is, is that after incubation of these LMPs in a serum over um, a 24-hour time period, we're able to see after extraction that mRNA that was uh, forming blebs with the LMPs are actually more well protected. But also when you extract them back out, they transfect better than the one that uh, formulated uh, at two, a 25 millimolar sodium acetate where the oil core structure is being observed. So with all of the work that we've been doing and, and the evidence that we're gathering, we came up with a mechanisms in terms of what, what might be happening with these LMPs. Uh, in a really traditional manner, when we are formulating these LMPs, small fascicle can form at pH 4. But by inducing um, a more fusogenic buffer, we're able to fuse these particles into larger structure LMPs that contains mRNA uh, with like an empty bilayer lab. And by neutralizing them, we're pushing the ionizable lipids um, away from the mRNA. And this causes phase separation where the mRNA is located in an aqueous pocket while the ionizable lipid forms an, an oil core uh, that is separated from it. So to quickly conclude, um, the LMP morphologies are important. And being able to understand the, these um, morphology and its correlations to the structural activity relationship are, are critically um, important for us to design better LMPs. And we have seen that with these blab structure, not only we can now visualize where the mRNA is located, but uh, we can also see that they, it has an improvement in the transfection potency both in vitro and in vivo. And one of the explanation that we have been investigating is, is the fact that the blab structure are able to separate the mRNA and therefore improve the stability and translatability once it is being delivered. And, uh, and for that, I want to thank a lot of people. Uh, uh, this is definitely not work on my own, uh, but with a, a great team at the Colors Lab, uh, especially Jerry Lang, who co-led this project. And, um, and everyone also um, have worked towards this um, project that I presented here, and as well as all the funding agency that has supported this work. Um, and thank you for listening, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, we, we have... Uh... We have time for one or two short questions. Okay. Go ahead. So, lipid uh, RNA addicts are measurable. Do you have any direct evidence for their formation? Um, we, we are still in investigation in terms of looking at these under UPLC and MS. Um, there are some publication, however, has looked into that. Um, uh, the, the, the kind of data that I've shown previously are from Madonna. Um, they have looked at um, uh, some of the fragment from the adducts, um, but more so on the nuclear side, uh, side of things. Um, there's not too much that is revealed in that publication. Um, so it's still an ongoing project to confirm some of those findings, especially uh, what ionizable lipid that, uh, or what part of the ionizable lipid is actually causing those adduct formations. So I'm wondering, uh, so with this blood structure, can you store uh, your LMP at a higher temperature now? That's a really good question. Uh, we, we have kept them at four degrees so far. Uh, what we have found uh, data that's not shown here is that um, these blab structures are a bit more transfection potent than what we see with the oil core structures uh, under storage at four degrees. So uh, there are some study that we're, we're still ongoing where we're kind of monitoring um, the transfection potency uh, over a longer period. Uh, and we do see that the one that has blebs tends to give us better transfection potency over time, too. But we haven't tried higher temperature. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much. Thanks Thank uh, to Miffy again.